I put together an example to demonstrate some ways you can recursively traverse all nested subdirectories while searching for the largest file. And I'm going to walk you through this demo code so you can pick and choose one of the ways shown here to use in your data object uh, you need to implement for assignment 7. So first of all, let's do a quick demo run of this project to see how it works. It uh, prompts for a directory path. I can try one of my subdirectories from the previous video. For example, this one has some nested uh, levels inside. Okay, so just going to paste this in and hit enter. All right, so let's take a look at the output. The demo run displays uh, four ways uh, to step through all the items uh, present in the nested subdirectories. Uh, so you can see that it displays uh, in all four of them a file named myfile.txt uh, and also it shows uh, multiple subdirectory levels traversed by the code. So the first example uh, which displays this part of the output is calling traverse directory static method which takes the path object as a parameter. Uh, so let's take a look at this method and see how this works. Okay, so here is the method. At the top it displays the absolute path to the directory that we're trying to process. And then it actually relies on the directory stream class that we already seen before in our previous videos. And the way to instantiate it is to call new directory stream, which is the static method of the files utility class. So this is what we do right here. So we use files and we use this directory stream. This directory stream becomes just a collection of path items present uh, in a certain directory. And for each path item, uh, I call another utility method in the files class just to see if it's a regular file or a directory. Uh, if it's a regular uh, file, I call print file info. Uh, which displays uh, two things. It displays the size of the file and the name of the file. At the same time, if this path happens to be a directory, I call the same static method recursively and just process it as the next uh, subdirectory that I need to traverse. Right. So we make this recursive call and pass this subdirectory as the next sublevel to process. So if you choose this approach in your own project, of course, you don't need any printing uh, here. Unless you're debugging your program, because some directories may contain thousands of files. And uh, if you just print them all, it quickly becomes useless. Even with uh, like a hundred items, it's problematic to debug like this. So keep this in mind. Next thing, of course, if you do this uh, recursive loop uh, inside a data object, and that's my suggestion uh, to make this just a normal method inside a data object, you can have object attributes that keep track of the largest file you have seen so far. And every time you suspect that it may be a largest file, uh, just uh, save this path object uh, in one of your data attributes. Uh, by the time this method completes, your attributes will be ready to display to the user. In fact, the prototype of such data object is going to be our demo in the next video.